watching. It's time to tackle one of my favorite subjects in the world, Saquon Barkley film. Actually, a lot easier to tackle the film than it is to tackle him. I'm here to blow your mind, probably not really, by telling you that I think Saquon Barkley should be the number one pick in your fantasy league. I don't particularly care about the format. I don't care if it's PPR. I don't care if it's Superflex. Saquon Barkley's my number one. I think any objections to that notion really come down to situation and worrying about the team, and I'll get to that later. First, let's just take a look at what makes this guy so good. This guy. There are probably five things that are exceptional on this run from week one of his rookie season. First regular season game of his career. Let's break them down one by one. This is an inside handoff out of shotgun, a zone play designed to allow Barkley to cut back when he sees something, and he sees something right away. Number 91, Yannick Ngakwe. Number 97, Malik Jackson, converging on him. So Barkley puts his left foot down hard and cuts straight upfield. That's good. Next, middle linebacker Miles Jack, number 44, is, oh, I don't know, standing in the hole, unblocked. Barkley gives him the dead leg with his left foot, explodes to his right, Next, as Barkley gets to the edge, number 36, Ronnie Harrison, gets an arm and a shoulder on him. I don't want to say Barkley laughs exactly, but he shrugs it off and keeps going. Now he's got the corner, and he's got Sterling Shepard blocking for him, but look at the acceleration. Look at number 39 here, Tayshawn Gibson, as he gets outside the hash marks. He kind of winds up taking the great circle route pursuing Barkley because he just can't account for how fast Barkley gets there. He's trying to take a straight line. It's just not working. And then, in one final lunge of desperation, Gibson lays out, and Barkley feels him, and with his back, right leg, somehow hurdles so that the tackler can't touch him, and he's gone, gone, gone. And then Miles Jack, at the end, is like, damn. Let me take a quick break to thank our sponsor of today's show. It's BetDSI.com. It's the online sports book where... I really do play. I've had an account there for four years. They've been a great sponsor. Lots and lots of listeners and viewers have opened accounts at BetDSI. And the thing I always say on the podcast and here on the YouTube channel is basically what you want out of your online sports book is it's mobile friendly. They've got good customer service and it just works. And that definitely fits BetDSI to a T. Uh, we've got the NFL season win totals. We've got uh, prop bets, who's going to be your MVP plus lots and lots of other sports wagering available. I've got two promo codes for you. If you are a regular player, you should use the promo code HarrisTube, and that will mean they'll match your deposit up to $500. It's 100% uh, deposit matching. If you want to dip your toe in the water, make just a few wagers, maybe I'd use HarrisTube5. They'll match your deposit up to 5%, but a little bit more liquidity on the back end. BetDSI, fantastic sponsor. If you're looking for an online sports book, really, look no further. That's where... I really do play. Okay, getting back into the very fun work of looking at Saquon Barkley film. I mean, people, it's hard not to find exceptional plays. How about this one? Week six, a screen against the Eagles. This is probably designed to be a screen because you can see the right side of the offensive line there. They let their guys go and they get downfield and they block. But even still, Philly sniffs it out pretty well. Maybe it's going to be a 10-yard gain until Barkley cuts it hard back inside and then cuts again and then takes some contact, and then kind of runs into his own guy, and then has a linebacker grab him by the shoulder and fling him, almost, except for it's Barkley who does the flinging, and the dude goes flying, and then Barkley accelerates to the other side of the field, and then cuts back inside again and makes two more dudes fall down, and then finally gets trapped from behind, and almost breaks that leg tackle, too. What a slacker. Only 55 yards, didn't get in the end zone. The level of moves stacked on vision stacked on strength, stacked on speed. I'll just say it, he's the best running back in the league. There are other really excellent ones. Nobody cuts like that at 233 pounds, has that acceleration, that long speed, that power. It is berserk. This long touchdown against Washington might really even be more about undisciplined defense and not protecting against a cutback. And it's good, obviously. The ferocity of the cutback is crazy. But I want to rewind it, and I want to look at the end zone angle, and I just want you to see what I mean on the podcast when I talk about crouched acceleration. After the cut, Barkley just looks different when he accelerates. He's somehow running faster than anybody in the field, and yet 
he's hunched forward. Does that make sense? All his momentum forward, coming around the edge. It just doesn't look like that when many dudes run, especially not 233 pound dudes. To me, honestly, it looks like nothing so much as Emmett Smith. You want jump cuts? I mean, it's almost nonsensical for me to break it down. Nobody bigger than like Tariq Cohen sized can pull this off. Maybe Zeke Elliott can. So number 77 there, that's Michael Bennett. He's getting shoved, but he's getting shoved into the hole. And Barkley just, I mean, you want to talk about stop foot, go foot. Look at how much push he gets off that 90 degree cut. He actually is completely changing vectors, changing his direction, but not slowing down. And then there's another little sidestep cut there to actually get to the outside. And then the acceleration and the long speed. And once again, another touchdown. How about as a receiver? I mean, Elliott, who really isn't a natural route runner, he had 77 catches last year, so should we be impressed by Barkley's 91? The answer is yes. Barkley's just way more of a natural body control guy when the ball's in the air. Uh, you know, we've been watching this week five play against Carolina. Just pay attention to the ball behind him, right? It's sort of thrown behind him, and he reaches back. He still makes a two-handed grab, but he turns his body to go with the throw. He sort of spins around midair, to keep so that he knows when he, he lands, he keeps his leg pointed in the right direction. So he run forward and score a touchdown. On this one, Barkley is split out wide, match one-on-one -on -one with undersized linebacker Zach Cunningham, and Barkley off the line, sees Cunningham, try to bump him, laughs, sidesteps him, gets a step, and then instinctively jumps when the ball gets there to position his body and wall off the defender and make the play. This is not your run-of-the-mill, Theo Riddick, minus one yard throw to a running back. And I mean, are we having fun yet? This is what it's like to watch Saquon Barkley every single week. These runs are everywhere. Do I think he's getting extraordinary line play here? Do I think the quarterback is really scaring people with his excellence? I think this is a dude facing defenders who know what's coming. Certainly by the end of the year they did. This is week 14 and they can't stop it. They're just getting cut on and shoved around, and Barkley is making them his daddy. So I guess the hesitation on Barkley that I hear people giving is, oh no, what if the Giants are really bad? You know, they got no wide receivers left after all the carnage. Eli Manning, not that good. Is the offensive line good? Now I'm too worried about his situation to consider him number one overall. Regular listeners, regular viewers, know what I'm going to say about situation. It matters. Of course it matters. We're just not awesome predicting it. Will defenses know that Barkley is the Giants' best weapon? Yes. Did they know it last year? Certainly after the first month of the season, yes. Barkley had the fourth most carries with seven plus men in the box last year. And given the plays you're looking at here, I don't think you'll find it surprising when I tell you that he was very good under such circumstances. I think that would be my larger point. Sure, yes, New York isn't going to have Odell Beckham for a full season. I'd be a fool to say that doesn't hurt the receiving core and doesn't hurt the offense in general, the passing game, all of it. But how much worse do we think the Giants are going to be than the 5-11 team that was pretty mediocre in 2018? If your argument for another player over Barkley is that you love that guy's surrounding cast so much more than Barkley's, it just feels like exactly the same kind of case that people were making last year against Joe Mixon. And it feels like the exact opposite of the case that people were making to make an argument in favor of Alex Collins. A running back who can do these kinds of things, the kinds of things we're looking at right now. I mean, trust me, I watch all the tape. No other running back does all of these kinds of things. Now, I'm not saying if Zeke Elliott's holdout is already over by the time you're watching this, that it's insane to take him over Barkley. But that's because Zeke is really good too, not because I somehow think, well, the Cowboys are so much better and he's definitely scoring five more touchdowns than Saquon Barkley. Predicting TDs is silly. And besides, haven't we proven here that Barkley can basically take anything to the house on almost any play? Yeah, you know, fretting about a guy who can do all that really feels like overthinking it. Again, I think Zeke Elliott is almost as good. Maybe not quite as diverse in his game, but almost as good. So listen, if you want Elliott at number one, I can't really argue against it. But Barkley has to be too. There's no other running back, no other player 
who I consider a viable number one overall player. Barkley is just that special. We've just watched all these plays. I don't believe this situation can contain that kind of talent. Hey, I wanted to remind you that I currently have the Harris Football 2019 Player Profile Almanac available. It's 200 plus pages. It's 240 uh, players worth of previews. I wrote it all summer. I think you'll really like it. Lots of film grades and much of the stuff that I'm telling you here and a lot of the plays that I'm showing you are from my notes from writing the Almanac. You can find out all the details at harrisfootball.com. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Don't be afraid of Saquon. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button, write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.